What is the right age to start talking to your kids about the political environment? 913-408-7957. You can call or text that answer. And I bring it up because uh, yesterday, Donald Trump's team shared this clip that I guess aired on CNN. I guess CNN was talking to kids about the presidential race. And we're not talking like high schoolers or even middle schoolers. We're talking like elementary school kids. Why CNN was doing this, I don't know. Um, But these clips were getting shared on social media yesterday and last night. And this one clip was obviously used by Donald Trump's team of a maybe six, maybe seven. But I would put this boy in the six to seven year old range saying this on CNN. What's the first word that pops into your head when you hear the name Kamala Harris? Liar. Okay. Now, listen, I agree with this young man. He's wise beyond his years. I'll say that much. But at the same time, I'm sitting here and I'm saying to myself, first off, why is CNN talking to kids about this? Like, what's the point? They can't vote. So, like, why do I care what a kid thinks, right? Why don't you go ask illegal immigrants what they think while you're at it? Like, who cares? They can't vote. They don't have a say in the election. So why are we interested in what they think about anything? Well, John? keep in mind the left, that's an extension of you. It's an accessory. That, uh, that's a good Remember? point. Yeah, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you for confirming that. Um, and I did find this. They said the children were anywhere from 9 to 10. So I don't know. I mean, I've got a soon-to-be 6-year-old. And this kid, if he's 10, then he's a little slow. He looks little for a 10-year-old. But either way, I sit here and I say to myself, a 10 is that really the appropriate age to be having that conversation? You know, my oldest, she started kindergarten, and she does not even know the name Donald Trump. Never heard the name. I mean, she might have heard it, but she doesn't know what it means. Certainly doesn't know Kamala Harris. We don't talk about it. I mean, the biggest issue we have is that we don't let kids be kids anymore. We want them to grow up as quickly as they possibly can, or at least some people do. Some people want to treat them as adults, right? They want to let them get surgeries on their bodies at eight years old because they feel a certain way. It's sick. It's disturbing. It's twisted. And many of us who disagree with that say, let the kids be kids. Well, if we're going to let the kids be kids, then we actually have to also do our part and say, we're not going to bring up the politics stuff to the kids. What's the point? Now, if they come home from school one day and they're like, hey, dad, hey, mom, you know, Miss, uh, Miss Sally, my teacher, told me that Kamala Harris is like this incredible person and she's going to make the greatest president ever in American history. And need, we need a woman president more than anything else in the world. Then it'd be like, OK, let's have a talk. Now, that has not happened to me. Maybe it's happened to you. But if that happens, then the conversation changes. But if we're going to talk about keeping our children innocent for as long as possible, which they deserve, then that has to run both ways. We can't just say that that runs one way when people want to jam left-wing ideology down our throats, but then also get up there and be like, yeah, we're going to teach my kids that Democrats are a bunch of liars and that's just how it's going to be and Donald Trump's the man. It's like, why don't we just raise them? And put them in the best position possible to have traditional values. And then when that time is right, and I don't know what that age is because my kids are young, but something tells me when the time is right, you'll know it. I got something in the mail yesterday. I meant to bring it to show you guys today, but Johnson County is pushing a bring your kids to vote with you thing. And then the kids will get a ballot and get to vote, but they're going to be voting on whether their favorite team is the Chiefs, Royals, Sporting KC, or KC Current. So they're not doing the exact politics thing, but they're like, hey, bring them, show them what's going on. So that's more, it sounds to me, like just encouraging them to vote yeah. and be voters and be engaged in the voting process. Mm-hmm. But they're not saying pick between Donald Trump and Kamala no. Harris. And I am fine with that. Like, I take my kids to vote, or at least I have. Take a little, depending on who's in the mood. You know, it always depends. Yeah, they like the sticker. I don't want to go vote. No. And then mom and dad have to go separately. We've had that happen before. When trying to determine what age 
adults tend to overthink it. Mm-hmm. They project things onto the children. The kids don't. The thing that Mark pointed out, that would be the way to do it. Okay, this is how you vote. You go and you pick chiefs or royals, okay? Mm-hmm. Don't overthink it. <laughs> don't burden them with, well, see, now Kamala and, and Donald and, you know. Yeah. Right? You don't overthink it. You have to put your mind in this. Remember when you were a kid, if you can, about what's important. Yeah. On the text line, Pete, these days you have to start talking about the politics earlier with kids. Because public schools are so liberal, they have all the DEI stuff, they have no problem talking to your kids about politics and pushing their agenda. You have to counteract it. Well, I'd be curious to get this texter's perspective on kids, age, who, what, where, when, why. Because my attitude is this. I am going to let the kids potentially have that come up in the schools and then counteract it appropriately. I don't want to be in the position where I'm forcing them to grow up to potentially counteract something that happens in the schools. I want to let them be kids. And if things happen in the schools, trust me, we're going to address it. We're going to talk about it. But I'm not going to be the one to take away the innocence because of fear. Tom's in Overland Park. He's first up. What's up, Tom? You're on KCMO. Hey, Pete. Um, Speaking from my own experience, I think I was in third grade in Tennessee, and we did a mock election. And it was Clinton, Perot, and uh, Bob Dole. So I fondly remember that as a kid, thinking, like, why are we doing this? But that's my experience. And then I really didn't get political until I was about 15 when I heard the famous Al Gore say that the ice caps would be gone in 20 years and then we were going to run out of oil in 60 years or something like that. So that's what got my attention was that wait a minute, I don't know if that's true or not. So that's just my perspective. Well, you are a man ahead of your time. You were questioning Al Gore and the ice caps as a young man. That's well done there, Tom. Yeah, he's, you know, he's as, probably as fake as the plastic he says we shouldn't make anymore. So, <laughs> You know, I remember, and, and, and Tom, I'm glad you brought that up. I My memory probably is, we would get Time Magazine. Do you remember, Mark, would you get Time Magazine for kids in the 90s? I think we'd get it at school. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Yeah. You, but was that a thing when you were around as a kid, we John? We had Scholastic News Weekly Reader, and each grade level it increased in its information and things like that. So okay. it was useful. But I don't think Time Magazine for Kids we really didn't. Yeah, we started did Newsweek uh, in high school for current events. Gotcha. Late 70s. So I remember that in like fourth grade. And yeah, there was probably some Al Gore and the Ice Caps things going on there as well because that would have been right around 99, 2000. And... Uh, Looking back on it, was there some politics in it? Yes, but it wasn't really in your face. To me, the political interest on my end started to pick up, I would say, post 9-11. Because at that point, I'm 13, and you're looking at the world from a very different perspective. That'll grow you up real fast, right? That's Mm -hmm. the thing that'll suddenly say, holy crap, this world is dangerous. And you're a teenager by then. So you're starting to kind of like... Okay, I'm interested. Start watching O'Reilly back then and, you know, look where we are all these years later. (laughs) Now he's coming on the show, right? My earliest recollection was third grade. We got to see the Nixon inauguration. Ah. So, which was cool only because we weren't in school and the TV was in the room. (laughs) Right? That was the main (laughs) thing. Sure, we're interested. Yeah, we love this. Like our caller we just had, we did a mock election at my elementary school in the Olathe District when it was Bob Dole and... Bill Clinton and Bob Dole, obviously, from Kansas. So that kind of got us excited. Bob Dole won like 90% to 10% in our school. So oh, he did. Fun. He did. But there weren't like woke teachers back then who were like, you dumb kids, you don't vote for a Republican. <laughs> Not that I saw, <laughs> at least. Uh, 913-408-7957. What's the appropriate age, Victor, in Parkville? Go ahead. You're next up. Well, the sooner the better. I mean, it actually, because the sooner you start teaching them critical thinking, then when they're sent off to these social indoctrination centers, we actually call public education, then, you know, you can have conversations when they come home with their assignments, whether it's mathematics dealing with social engineering or whether it's a skewed sense of history and that kind of thing. And if you have these discussions talking all the way back to the political leanings and how we came about to be a nation under the revolution all the way through, we fought Nazism and communism uh, both in World War II and then on through the Cold War and everything else, then you're having these conversations okay, what age, and they're learning what about What age are things. you teaching a kid about the Cold War, Victor? Please. What age? But, but, it, but all of this leans into politics. You're no, saying I, a I, good know. Founda- I, I know. I know. So give me an age. Give me an age. 
as soon as po- as soon as possible. Okay. I, well, yeah, but that's that's a that's, that's a bailout. A that's a Kamala Harris that. answer. That's a Kamala Harris answer. Okay. I need an age. What is as soon as possible? What's appropriate? Uh, I was probably talking to my kids on the, about the basics, probably maybe five, six, seven. You were teaching basics your kids limit. about the Cold War at five years old. God bless you. That's well, impressive. Well, my father my father was a World War II vet, and I'm a Cold War vet. So, yeah, you're discussing about geopolitics. You're doing it on a child level, just yeah. as you would discuss history with him, you would tell him, well, this is what Thomas Jefferson did. Later on, you'd say, well, yeah, Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. Yes. And then as he got older, yes, you have the more critical conversations about mm. what Thomas Jefferson stood for and why he had to actually own slaves. What was the political line? So you make it age appropriate. Okay. Now, that's, listen, that's what it's all about. I, I, I can the see foundation. that. I, I, I understand that. You know, Claire came home yesterday. You know whose name she mentioned? Speaking of politicians and presidents, there was one that came up. She mentioned this person's name yesterday. No idea. I'm putting up one finger. What might that mean for presidents? Number one. Oh, George Washington. Hey, right? There we go. Well done that? there, gentlemen. A little slow, but yeah. Very do- well done. Well done. Uh, yes. I'm like, whoa, okay. All right. You know, Suddenly I, the name George Washington came I, up. I, I'm with Victor on the critical thinking early, but that's whether you want chocolate or vanilla. <laughs> right? It doesn't have to involve geopolitical I, statements. I have Victor beat. I watched the uh, last debate with my nine-month-old. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you were, preaching, you were preaching the critical thinking yeah. in politics. You were breaking down Kamala Harris's economic policies to that nine-month-old. I know you were, Mark. 913-408-7957. Uh, The text line, the phones are open. What is that appropriate age? This viral clip on CNN where a bunch of um, elementary school kids were asked about their stance on the upcoming election made me think to myself, what is the appropriate age? What's the first word that pops into your head when you hear the name Kamala Harris? Liar. Like, it's easy to just laugh at that and be like, you know what? That's pretty funny. That boy's wise beyond his years. But then I think... What are we doing? Do we just need to let kids be kids? I mean, I don't talk to my little kids about any of this stuff. Now, they're six and under, five and under, but I don't bother with it. Meantime, like, I saw someone who is in office here in Jackson County dress up their child in a Kamala Harris T-shirt and then post it on social media. And I think their kid's the same age as my oldest at five. And I'm like, that's, that's just gross. I've never owned any MAGA stuff, but, you know, listen, I'm going to go vote for Donald Trump for a third time. And if I did own anything that was Trump related, would I put my child in it? No, my kid's not a prop for my politics. My kid's a kid. So at what age is like that appropriate? Is that something that we should be uh, letting them talk about? Do we want to start talking to them about it? Let's start with uh, Brenda. She is in Prairie Village. Hey, Brenda, you're on KCMO. Good morning. Oh, thank you so much. You know, I was just thinking I grew up in um, grew up in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and I'm raising um, a 13-year-old right now. So I'm 73, have a 13-year-old. But I remember uh, watching when Kennedy was assassinated, we started learning about the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I think, I think we always knew what was going on in the government to some degree, because we might have to hide under our desk. Mm-hmm. If the country was attacked. But um, nowadays, my son, he's uh, last year I took him to on the trip to Normandy to D-Day. And uh, we went through Berlin and all over there where World War II happened. But, you know, he's pretty into politics. And he started that about 10 years old. And that 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 it, seems like an earlier age, but not unreasonable. Like that, I understand. Fifth grade, probably, give or take. Um, that's... That's appropriate to me, Brenda. So thank you. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, he was, he was curious about World War II. And I think we have a great memorial here, World War One, and they mm-hmm. just updated it all. So yeah. it's it's good to educate your kids, kids so they know what's going on. I, I love bit. that. And that's, that seems like age a very – and, and age appropriate. And also, thank you so much, Brenda. Hope to see you out at Politics in a Pint next week, by the way, if you can make it. Oh, I will be. Oh, you will thank be. Thank you. Outstanding. All right. Uh, if you want to join us, there still day. are. Thank you. You as well. Still some spots open. We'll be at uh, American Legion Post 370 right off 75th Street in Overland Park. 6 p.m. on Tuesday. Prasanth Reddy running against Sharice Davids and Doug Bedford wants to be your next Johnson County Sheriff. 
We'll have you out of there way before the VP debate. Join us, have a beer, hang out. We'll have a good time. We'll talk to the candidates. You can meet them as well. Um, RSVP right now at kcmotalkradio.com. So that seems like more than appropriate, and she's right. The National World War I Museum and Memorial is outstanding. And, but that's more teaching American history as well. That's not teaching like, Trump's the man, Kamala stinks, like, or vice versa. Yeah, there you go, right, right. W- which is more like American history. Jessica's in Liberty. Hi, Jessica. You're on KCMO. Good morning. Good morning. I think you're naive to think that kids aren't always listening. My oldest is 19 now, but at the time, he would tell you that he, I mean, I was amazed at the stuff that came out of his mouth just because he was around his um, dad and grandpa, and he was always listening to what they were saying, and he is a history buff and has always been, and so he knew about the Cold War way earlier than I would have taught him or that the school system would have taught him. Mm -hmm. Also, you have to talk to your kids younger. I I was a school teacher, and second grade is when the teacher that I was watching one time had a conversation about why it was inappropriate to pin your fellow classmate against the wall and grind your pelvis into her. So I was like, are you going to talk to the parents about that? And she's like, oh, no, that's a classroom issue. Hmm. So, well, that's young. definitely disturbing. Um, you know, and I agree with you. Listen, I think the Cold War stuff is interesting, Jessica, and thanks so much. I, I think that that's a great point to bring up because I look at that and I say, well, that's once again tied back to what Brenda was saying on more having your kids know about American history. And that's incredibly valuable. Now, who's grinding up against who in second grade on the locker wall? I don't know. But, um, you know, listen, I do think there's a movement with social media and kids getting smartphones at eight years old to destroy that youth. There's no doubt about it. Uh, It is part of a bigger problem. But then what are you doing at home to combat it as well? Uh, Let's go to Ryan and Olathe. Ryan, you're on KCMO. Got a minute, my man. What's up? Hey, Pete. I I think life circumstances have a lot to do with it. I deployed to Afghanistan when I had a two- and a Mm four-year-old. And so the conversation came up, why does dad have to spend a year on the other side of the country, and then you get into 9-11 and the background and all that kind of stuff. But it, I, I think life just kind of dictates that you have to talk about some of those things, and it's at a rudimentary level, but you still got to answer those questions. I mean, my four-year-old has so. Well, the, uh, Ryan, I, Ryan you are, you're so spot. I mean, that's obviously, like you said, life circumstances, no-brainer, understanding why dad, you know, isn't here and what's going on in the world and, that's got to be a tough conversation for a four-year-old to understand, but it has to be done, right, to your point. Right. Yeah. Well, hey, man, and thank, thank you for that service. Well, thanks for paying taxes. They know how to spend them. <laughs> thank you, Ryan. Um, that is, listen, but that's also, I think that actually weaves into more of the broader point here. That's more about what's going on in the world, what has gone on in the world. That's not as much about, like, yeah, this guy Bush sent us over here. What a bum. Yeah, life is different than politics. Yeah. But great calls, great conversation. Thank you guys here on KCMO. 